The Earbuds Podcast, presented by Headliner Music Club. Welcome to the Earbuds Podcast, episode number five, presented by Headliner Music Club. I'm Jersey, one of your hosts, and I got uh, Neil Jackson up top of me. Hey, hello. I got uh, DJ Five. Number hello. This is the f- fifth episode. DJ Five this is like your golden episode right here. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> this is where you're gonna shine, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm shining. <laughs> And uh, we got a special guest on today's episode from the Bay Area, Shabazz. How's it going? <laughs> we are here. We are here. So Post Super Bowl, big loss, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, br- we'll bring all that up too. Um, so yeah, we got Shabazz here from the Bay Area. He's gonna um, chime in on some of the stuff that you know. We got a lot of questions, <clears throat> I think, and um, it'll be fun. And then uh, we'll go over some chart toppers, some sneaky slappers, and we have a special one featuring Nicki Minaj slappers. Ooh. Also, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna, you know, we're, we're ready to go. And then um, just want to check in with everybody. Five, I know you were in Japan for the past, seemed like a month. Yeah, I was there, uh, supposed to go for like five days and ended up extending and totaling about 11 days. Damn. Jeez. Yeah, it was, it was a good time, man. How much was that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I used a lot of points, so which was great. And then changing the flights was easy because, like, I just hopped on the next flight the next day, which is the same price. No change fees or nothing. The only thing I lost on was, like, maybe an upgrade. But other than that, How, like... What about was, gigs lost? Oh, I mean... <laughs> no, no, but that's the reason I did it because I didn't have to cancel any gigs. I didn't have oh, anything okay. on on the calendar so that's why i was like all right i can literally be gone for like the next 15 days i'll be good so. how was zook out there it's new right yeah i think it, they opened last october it is like you know any big club in asia i think um a lot of big room a lot of big room uh house edm uh, a lot of sing-alongs you play any hip-hop i did I actually friday they were like actually um not pushing me to play but they're like oh you know like you can go a little more hip-hop and like open format on friday so i did wait um, but what, what's hip-hop out there dude hip oh, really quick <clears throat> hip-hop out there like miley cyrus is hip-hop it's like <laughs> that, no, 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 i'm dead serious <laughs> nah, i, I, I nah, did nah. a thing out there and like they were asking they were asking it was something like a pop sing-along record like it was like a you know like a girly like Katy perry type of record yeah, yeah. and they're like yeah hip-hop keep it hip-hop i'm like no, that's weird. Like, yeah, it's no, weird. They, they, they might have said pop. Maybe you misheard. <laughs> I don't know. I read that they, wrong. They've then. always yeah. like historically have been a huge hip hop fans. That's yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't. There are definitely like certain. Maybe, maybe no, you didn't hear hip hop. Uh, the, the, maybe you heard the hip hop, the hip part of it in your head. <laughs> I don't know. It was. Uh... <laughs> no, no, but definitely there's like hip hop spots out there like Harlem and like. Um, small little, uh, you know, like venues, bars and stuff. But like Zook was in uh, Ginza, which is like the higher end shopping area, not <clears> really known for nightlife. So yeah, the crowd was a little, um, it was pretty international. It's pretty, um, a lot of tourists too. So, but hip hop wise is in like, no, I play like Mobamba and like Plain Jane and a lot of Drake and it worked. But then I also, I was going up and down a lot. And then the second night I made, I probably played ninety percent big room EDM, and like you know, do they sing along to like the Mobamba stuff or no? No, they they were raging. They had a yeah. I actually played a, a not not Sky but uh, Breathe, uh, Playboy Cardi, and that went off. Oh wow! There's there some some ragers in there on fr- on Friday, and then Saturday was more like top forty big room, you know. But yeah, I didn't want to leave, man. <laughs> it seemed like Damn. it. It seemed like you just kept extending, extending. And was then, there uh, um was there ever like any like Elvis lookalikes uh <laughs> that were in the club just like Blue like Sway the characters, it? right? <laughs> yeah. That's the only <laughs> reference I've never been in Japan, so that's the only reference I've got. I only saw like some viral video of like nah. a bunch of uh, Japanese Elvis is just going ham. Nah, I didn't see any of those. I wish I did. <laughs> um that's no, I had some, I yeah, had had some homies from the states that like that are living out there now, so they came and popped off, and a bunch of friends. There was just random people in town, like it was it was a good time. Yeah, nice. but, yeah. Music wise, it's honestly, um, Zook kind of remind me of Vegas. So nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Neil, you did uh, the New York Rangers hockey game. <clears throat> oh wow, I did. That big was hockey my, guy, big hockey uh, guy now. 
Did you know that there are three periods in a hockey game? Yeah, I, I DJ for the Blackhawks. I, I'm pretty... <laughs> Damn, I thought there was four. <laughs> no no <laughs> joke. Crazy. I learned that moment. I was well, like, wait. Dude, yeah, I did the same thing. I did like, uh, I was a guest DJ for the Golden Knights. And then I was like, oh, so I'll, when's the what, what when's the half? When do I go on? And they're like, no, you're going on uh, third quarter or third half. I'm like, what? No, there's like, two second. intermissions, guys. There's two intermissions. There's yeah, two yeah two I, I went on how, second how intermission. Long, how long are each, how long are each quarters? No, the uh, quarters. Uh, 20 halves. minutes. 20 minutes each each. Each oh, so one is minutes. twenty, yeah, okay. sixty minutes, and then you have the two two intermissions. So in between, or like oh, the one nice. intermission, okay. and then you have another minute. Inter- oh intermission. my god, that it was like that was like so hard for me to wrap my head around. I was like, wait, so am I going on like so? There's two halves, and they're like, no. And I was like, I'm so confused on one because I'm <laughs> so used to doing Knicks games, and I'm like, I don't know how this is structured. <laughs> It's wild though. It's a fun party. I think it, I think the is. hockey crowd is um man, they like they like to rage. They like to drink and stuff. It's definitely a, like a drinkers, you know, like fun party more than I mean, I've been basketball games too and I think basketball games are are like it's fun too, but I think the hockey environment, I think there's a lot of beer drinkers. Yeah, I would say like a lot of Coors Light. Yeah. yeah. Way way different crowd like playing for the Rangers and that was that was exciting. We 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 won that game at the, the very last minute i think you guys are good um thank you yeah. i mean that's my team all, it was all you yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. That was. <laughs> you're you're the rangers yeah that, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a different it's a way different crowd playing for the knicks is like playing at a like a bottle service club like everybody's like too cool they get they get hype like yeah. there's true knicks fans and they get hype but like hockey hockey fans are way different it's like playing for like do you ever watch the movie roadhouse oh i love roadhouse <laughs> it's I like a remake the, of it actually yeah there's oh, a yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they just did a trailer for it oh damn it really looks wild yeah yeah oh, bro guy hella jacked in africa is it jake gyllenhaal yeah. i think yeah, it's jake gyllenhaal so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he's doing a you know yeah i think hockey is definitely like a bar more if you were to like say the crowd that goes there it's like it's kind of a bar fun bar crowd and then you have like the basketball which is like the bottle service kind of too cool not too cool i don't want to say that but you have that like hey let's keep it cool let's keep it vibey let's like you know different environment i think not saying every stadium's like that but um yeah i i I, kind of get that vibe when i'm definitely in those arenas and stuff like that so um but yeah it was exciting it was my first game Hopefully they uh, bring, hopefully I didn't screw it up too bad. Well, they won, but, so you you did great. You didn't because you of didn't my run. music. I yeah, played exactly. "Don't Stop Believing" the way that they needed to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, like a um, redrum edit or something. Yeah, <laughs> the EDM redrum. Did uh, Shabazz? Did you have to do anything for? I know, like you guys, just you know the Super Bowl situation. I don't want to bring up the the L but uh, <laughs> it's too soon but did you have any uh, you know where'd you watch the game you, were you in the city or you know yeah we were, we were in the city usually during the Super Bowl or like the NFC championship game that we had last year here uh, we do like day parties and the after parties I did the NFC championship after party so Debo and everyone came to the club but for the Super Bowl I just dialed in I was just we were just with family and friends nice. just kind of wanted to just really focus on the game nice was the was the nfc parties was that you know it, because it's kind of like when you watch sports and they're like yeah we didn't win shit yet you know but are, were they celebrating it or were they kind of just like yeah it's cool but we still want it you know we have something bigger coming up you know it was kind of like that it was yeah. like debo and Ayuk and ray ray and trent williams and all them came to the club because they just actually like the music we play but they definitely were like we got to finish the job yeah yeah but it was two it was two weeks out so they had it was it was fine yeah yeah that's true too yeah <clears throat> you got that break in between before yeah. the super Bowl. before so. they got to really like dial in so it, it, it was it was actually a really really good after party for what it was nice nice i was in vegas for uh super bowl and i did a uh party with zach bryan he's a country oh, yeah no, he's yeah. huge yeah I, I really don't know too much about country, so uh, I had did that, and then uh, the city was pretty wild. I mean, it was it it, it wasn't 
I wouldn't say this is crazy. F1 was like kind of a disaster just because everything was closed. Like the streets were closed and the traffic was all messed up. But um, for Super Bowl, it was pretty organized. It seemed pretty organized. The parties were pretty wild. Like it seemed like everybody was having some sort of... <clears throat> everyone was like one-upping somebody because you thought this was a dope party like i'm like oh shit future and david getter or whatever they're doing this big pop-up and they're like no but kanye is over here he's doing this pop-up and then usher's having this private event that no one's allowed into but you know maybe if you know somebody they can get into that one it's just like that was I, I think of all the cities um that i've seen a super bowls at like that was probably the craziest because everything was also like last year was in arizona but it was so spread out. Yeah. And Arizona's like, you have stuff yeah. in Glendale and you have stuff in Scottsdale. And, and it downtown. overlapped with, uh, um, what is, what is the Phoenix. So yeah, it's the like Phoenix Open. Insane. Yeah. Like it was people. wild, but it was spread out. And I think Vegas, because it's only, you know, whatever block, it's like everything is right there. You see it. Yeah. You go, oh, I'll go across the street. And then like Fanatics had a wild party at Marquis. Yeah. That, like, I didn't know Fanatics did shit like that. That was oh like, yeah, every oh year. my god, yeah. Fanatics. dude, that guy, what's his name, Michael Michael Rubin. He, Michael Rubin. Yeah, he owns oh the Seventy Sixers too, so he's dude. He's he really is. he's the one that does the all white party in the Hamptons. Oh yeah. yeah, but like the connection, like I mean, dude, you have the guy from Apple there. What's Tim? Is it Tim Cook? Tim, Tim Cook. Cook. Yeah, you have Tim Cook with Travis Scott with um the the, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys to like the most <laughs> mismatched crowd. Tom Brady's hanging out with you know uh justin bieber and i'm like what the fuck is going on at this party like ice spice has got a thong on and she's just chilling <laughs> with tim cook i'm ice like spice just doing ice spice but yeah. like you know it, you know, it, it it's dope but like i've never seen a party like that was just so mixed of different yeah. groups it's and always different been groups. like that all his parties are like that all the all of his parties how do we get into one of those parties that's my other question at this i point. had i had chase try to go with him but uh you know he was he was with an entourage, so I'm like, ah, I'm chill. I'll chill in the poker room. <laughs> but um, cool. All right, guys, let's go do the charts real quick. Um, All righty. Uh, top. Let's just go over the top ten real quick. We have on uh, HMC. We have Sweetie with Pilo. Uh, do it for the Bay. Can Too soon, man. <laughs> Shabazz, can you speak on this record? <laughs> It's a good record. It's a remake of a, a Bay Area classic record, but originally sampled from the Silk, the Shocker. Uh, we we want them girls. I think we them girls. We like them girls. Ah. So it's but it's a very specific San Francisco 49er anthem. But Pilo is just very good at making slaps that it works on the nightclub too. Nice. So it's All definitely right, so something it, you could play. Is it new or is it like too new it's super or is new. it? It's like oh, easier to play new. like outside of the bay than like Bang Bang Nutter Gang, right? Like that's one hundred percent. Yeah, but I no. still don't think I don't know if he'll live outside uh, east of like Phoenix because that tempo is like such a Bay Area yeah. California tempo. It's sound, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Ice Spice, uh, think you the shit fart. I like. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird when you got to say it, if you just say that, you know, but anyway, but that record, uh, it seems like it's doing stuff. I actually kind of like it, but it seems like it's moving a little so bit. So it's like 130 BPM Jersey Club, it seems like. It's, it's weird. Yeah. So, they, so uh, this song is actually pretty clever because for, for New York, at least, because Ben is almost the exact same speed. But Ben was such a bitch to try to play because it's its own tempo. So it's like it takes the form of Jersey Club, but it's not the same speed. Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's 122. Like, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit slower. So this song is actually, thank God it's charting, could be one of the other ones that can be paired up with it. Yep. That's just 41. Like a, that a, bent, that, that, that's a song? 41. Yeah, it's like 126 or 120, 122. It's like it's like Drake Sticky. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Sticky was like 33 BPM. But yeah, it can be mixed together. So. Yeah. Uh, number Sweet. three is the Temper Trap, Sweet Disposition, Giant Summit, Silver Panda Remix, Stardust at number four, Music Sounds Better With You, Slashy Disco Edit, uh, Hugel, and uh, Alex Gusta, uh, Ready to Go, My Addiction, Sophie Ellis Bexter, Murder on the Dance, but that song is really doing good. Yeah. Still. Uh, Mao P Beats for the Underground. You guys playing that record? I've seen a lot of that <clears throat> Mao P guys like. Yeah, he's crushing. He's got residency yeah. in Vegas now. So, um, no, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Just because right. it's I not very, it. uh, you know, it's kind of deep. Yeah. 
Uh, or what else? We got, so we got Soak City, Nova's uh, Slam and Edit. And that's finally picking up in New York. Soak City? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's, that's actually, cool. yeah, that's that's the edit I play. It's no, uh, Nova killed it with that one. But that's a, that's a crazy shit because I think we brought up Soak City like back in November when I was like, oh, it's this new record, whatever. And you guys were kind of like, all right. And then the, I played it in... I remember I played in Chicago at Tao and no one really knew it, but it's like, you can see the migration. Now you're like, right. Neil's starting to get it. Where it's like, yeah, we're finally starting to see it. I saw it do pretty well uh, at Little Sister like a week ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's rare. For there's a West. dance to that, right? Yeah, it was it was yeah. a viral dance on TikTok. So. Uh oh, that's how it kind of blew up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then lastly, or wait, we have uh, Skilo, I Wish, Burnout. 2024 edit and then uh, LL Cool J head sprung. So there's a lot of throwbacks in this uh, thing, but okay. Those yeah. are the headliner music club charts. And then uh, <laughs> let's go to Billboard real quick. Jack Carlo, Loving On Me, number one again. That song's doing really, really good. It doesn't seem like it really uh, leaves the top five every month. So are you playing that, Shabazz? Is that going off? And it, it has its moments. So if I get out of it quick enough it works but if i okay. let the the verse kind of ride a little too long it it kind of it kind of loses its momentum yeah that's how it is for me too so quick all right uh what else we got here teddy swims lose control beautiful uh things at number three cruel summer taylor swift snooze sizza at number five i remember everything zach bryan tate mccray greedy number seven luke holmes fast car i think that just came up because of the grammy awards yeah uh gora hills doja cat and um, molly Cyrus flowers at the see like the grammys flowers? i feel like had a huge influence on those records i think that moved yeah, i feel like it hasn't changed much huh the grammys i think put flowers back in the top 10 yeah and some of those other records um, i mean i mean with those, with those dance moves do you guys watch <laughs> that show no. The performance, uh, Miley Cyrus's performance of Flowers uh, for the Grammys. Mm -mm. Oh, went, I, I did. Yeah, she went for it. <laughs> yeah, she was she was selling it. I think she got she got like Song of the Year for that or something. She oh, got a big award you? for that because I remember her speech was kind of a little weird. But uh, okay, TikTok, Billboard Top Fifty, Flo <laughs> Millie, Never Lose Me. Is anyone playing that? Yes, That's... religiously. Really. really? All the girls love it. Yeah, yeah. It's like really? I feel like it's a closing R and B yeah. song, though, right? Like you're not playing that prime time, right? No, or, not not prime time. But I'm definitely, you know, clubs close out here at two a.m. So like, yeah, that's prime what I'm saying. Like a, yeah, it, like a one fifteen, one twenty record. Like yeah, that's when all the real the real girls that know what's going on. Wow. They're like, okay, wow, that was yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, really? that's number one on TikTok. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, I had no idea. Okay, I gotta start playing that. Uh, one call, Rich Amiri. Do you guys know that record? So that was actually going to be in my ones to watch. That that track. I didn't even know we had a segment called ones to watch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, oh uh, we should make a note that uh, we should make a section called ones to watch. <laughs> Got it. All right. Ones to watch segment. Yes. I so that that song heavy. It's number two on TikTok. I, I didn't know that was. Um, yeah, that is song it? is. Um. I mean, it's it's just like a new artist that's coming from the underground. It, it sounds very. Uh, if I were to compare it to anybody, it would be kind of like a older future. Yeah, his voice. I, I saw an yeah. interview. His voice kind of sounded like future. But like this is like I think one of his. I think this might be his only crossover, or it's really? starting to become a crossover. Hmm. So. All right. Well, just to watch. Well, yeah, it's something you should watch out for. <laughs> <laughs> New segment. Uh, a song called uh, Little Life by Cordelia at number three. Uh, I wouldn't mind. He was he. Uh, some of these records were just, I'm just going to read through them. I'm not sure if you know. Dance You Out of My Head by Kat Janice. Beautiful Things, Benson Boone. Uh, Gucci Mane, Point in My Life. Does anyone know about that record or no? Yeah. I did not. Not but I. Now I do. So, okay, so Chabaz, you're playing it? Gucci Man releases records every single week. So TikTok <laughs> doesn't move the needle really for Gucci, but it's definitely one of the better recent records that he's released. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh, Mitski, uh, My Love, Mine, All Mine, and then Jack Harlow, number nine, and then Boss Man, D-Lo. That, that's, that's in my top five right now. Get yeah, in that with me. 
Yeah, that's top, in my top it, five. Where's that was he, my ones to watch section. He's from like, I, I want to say like <laughs> Mississippi or Alabama, but he, 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 he definitely has a little movement right now. He got like three or four records and they all. I mean, he's up. charting in Chicago. Yeah, no he shit. is. Yeah. Oh, it I, should be I don't is. know. He's number four. You're right. Yeah, you're right, I don't right, know yeah. if you know about this jersey. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm up on my shit. All right, hold on. He's at number four right now. All right. He's number one in Atlanta, but he's uh, yeah, he's he's well, charting in Chicago. If you don't know, jersey. so yeah, we're we're jumping. Or yeah, so <laughs> going to the Apple Music City charts. That is uh, that is true. He is number four in Chicago, and then Kanye and Ty Dolla are basically the top three, with Carnival back to me and uh fuck something and then uh there's a guy named javi have you guys heard of him la diabla isn't the song that's on every chart for some reason i, I don't yeah, know so if... you play that record no I, i'm not oh okay i don't, I don't know it's on this it's the same uh it's the regional uh what are they calling it now that that genre like the regional Pluma? like regional uh, mexican records yeah. uh, is that what is that is that the category is that the proper category for it i hope so or else i'm gonna get in trouble for saying that uh, <laughs> no. uh, i think I so. I tight when you said i was like Oop. no I, <laughs> it's not me man that's what they put these categories and i'm just reading i'm just reading the look shit. on five's face just now he's like <laughs> <laughs> chicago has hella mexicans though right yeah 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 we have a because the a, the peso pluma don't does that work anywhere outside of california Vegas. Chicago. Are you, chicago does yeah, yeah. yeah. chicago yeah, are you i playing, think Texas New York. too. Okay, yeah. Te- I mean, yeah, probably the border states, anything close to Mexico, but like my is Miami and New York like New York really nah. it does not exist. It does not work, right? Yeah. That whole genre does not exist here. Yeah, it's like at least, music. At least at least uh, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure DJs are listening. As far as I know, I have never needed it. I have I have Pestle's album, but nothing. Like, but I no, feel I've like never he fell off too though, like not not saying that like in that scene he's probably big but in terms of like the bottle service scene like that one record kind of crossed over but then it was like after the that, lady the lady gaga one works too that's but those are the oh, only yeah. two i didn't even know he had a lady gaga record man I'm, no, yeah, no, you yeah, know, it's, yeah, it's called, it's lady, called gaga. lady gaga it's like, oh it's yeah, called lady it's all, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. she's not on it or anything um uh, all right cool so uh those are the charts for the month and uh yeah we'll move on to let's get to uh i guess the trending artist right now obviously usher because of the super bowl what you guys think of the show shabazz i'll let you do it because your team was <laughs> involved in the game involved <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say well, you know they just they participated in the game they per- uh the performance to me it, it looked flawless i don't know how much better you could get this dude's like 44 up there on fucking roller skates dancing like how do you get in and out of those roller skates so fast i want to know that that was the production that they did in the 15 minutes and then obviously adding the layer of alicia keys and the justin bieber add-on i guess was supposed to be the climactic moment that didn't happen but i heard that he actually asked him to and he declined not to do it so it ended up to usher but you know ending it with yeah like he did the perfect amount of uh the biggest songs but going in and out of them at like just enough he was just giving you enough of it yeah i think like he, he kept this he kept it moving and i think that was like the biggest challenge taught like going into the show people were kind of questioning go he has a lot of r&b and slow songs yeah. how are you gonna keep it like a, how you can keep the energy up and then i was like shit if he could play burn like that maybe i could play that peak hour or whatever because it's like the energy was still like wild he would just yeah. do a snippet of it. he just like does the hook and then he's back out to something bigger so i don't know who produce that show like in just in terms of his like music selection but the way those songs went together was like i think it was jd that i mean not produced but i think he did the mix for that, it. that mix was flawless yeah. yeah it was fire it was it was one of the better ones in the recent years i know i was seeing on tiktok hella people were like hating on it but i think it was a lot of like people were hating yeah little Gen people, Z I mean, people hated it i thought people i would, i might have been with them on that one really yeah i mean look i i i love usher but for a halftime show I don't know. I, I still look at Rihanna's show, and he, she was just cranking out hits. I thought Rihanna was energy, terrible. Energy was up. I thought he, like, did, he did all he, the slow songs. He did a lot of slow songs. I was like, I mean, this is cool. It's cool. It's cool. I'm not saying it's bad. Sh- I was so just hoping Sha- that it was Sha- just going to be was better than Usher's? Shakira's. Was, nah. I don't even know if I heard Shakira's. The one I think I, it was in Miami. Yeah, it was. 
I like think, Usher gave you 15 minutes of like certified. I think he did it right records. for for the for the fan for the crowd too. For like the you know it's like a West Coast like a lot of a lot of Bay was in the in the like in the stadium and like I, you can hear people singing like the whole stadium singing along like to like the slow songs too. I thought he did a solid uh, A minus performance. I thought it was okay. better than Rihanna. I mean, Rihanna. No, no. If, Rihanna like, was pregnant though, so I don't know. That's if what I'm saying. Yeah. Judge. So like, you, yeah, she ain't gonna you, shoot herself out of a cannon. But like, yeah. why would you book a pregnant? <laughs> like, she was pregnant on this. She's not gonna move, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that was like the. For me, I'm like, all right. The stage was dope. I like that. You know, like it was kind of levitating on. You know, it was like a glass stage and everything. I thought that was cool. Production was good for Rihanna, but like her overall performance was just. You know, she's pregnant, so you booked a pregnant yeah. girl. Like, what do you think's <clears> gonna like? She ain't gonna move. Yeah. Like. You know, all right. But, I mean, uh, but when JD came out in that little kid uniform, I was just like, <laughs> "All right, I'm locked in. What's going on here?" <laughs> there was a lot of uh, a lot of memeable moments. <laughs> yeah, there definitely was. There I definitely was like, was. everyone up. thought Deluxe thought it was uh, CeeLo. I think a few people thought it was CeeLo. I, I, I no joke. I, I thought 100 was... thought it was CeeLo. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was CeeLo. Man, I was I was like racking my brain, like, where? What song did he do with CeeLo? I thought Will I, I thought Will I am was Yay. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So then when he put the mask, I was like, I was yeah, like, that's mask, Kanye. Oh, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. 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 I mean, then they brought out her and I was like, all right, now, okay. I all thought right, her was Lauren Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Shit. know. I'm not her familiar with her. <laughs> her look like Northwest, bro. She came out. I was like, is this Kanye's daughter out here playing the guitar? But you know, hers from the Bay. So, you know, yeah. I could just see us now just all confused throughout the whole show. Like, oh, oh shit, God. CeeLo. The only person I wasn't confused about was Ludacris. He came out. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. that's Luda. He came in. That Luda, Lil John, 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 John too. too. Yeah, like, I, the end part was good. I thought it was a good performance. I thought for like what they had to work with, and you have an RB artist, per, you know, primarily this guy's doing a lot of slower songs. Like, that was moving. Like, he came out, like, uh, I think. Caught up was the song he came up with, right? Yeah. And then yeah. mm-hmm. good energy. Like we were trying to figure that out before. I'm like, what is he gonna come up with? And then you know, I was like, is it oh my god or something like that? But I don't know. I think it turned out to be a pretty good performance uh, overall. All right, cool. Uh, Kanye and Ty Dolla. I think <clears throat> uh, you know me being from Chicago and it's charting in our city charts. I, I think the album's really good. They had a. They had that that first show was here on uh, Thursday. Fun fun side fact: he was trying to bring a bunch of sand into the United Center, and they wouldn't let him. <laughs> so <laughs> they, uh, they 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 because the, so I I had to work the night before on Wednesday night, and he was doing that secret performance on Thursday, and they were trying to like load in trucks of sand for because they wanted to make it like I guess the album cover is like yeah. like a desert, and they're like, yeah, we're just gonna put a mound of sand. And the United Center is like, nah, we're not, we're not cleaning up sand. And we, they had another. They had actually they were playing the Rangers the next night, so they were like, we're not doing all that for this for this Kanye show. And then they didn't know if it was going to happen or not, so it was like all very last minute. Um, but I, you know, then the album I think dropped kind of late, and then it didn't drop on Spotify, and like everything was, I, I don't know. There's been a lot of like uh, different. I, I guess hurdles he's had to go through. A lot of samples didn't get cleared. Ozzy Osbourne got mad at him. But what are your thoughts on the on the? Did you guys listen to it, or what are your thoughts on the project? I mean, I listened to it. Um, my opinion on on the album, like despite whatever he's got going on in the in the media, I thought the album was good. I thought it was very good, actually. I listened to it several times. Um, he didn't get too left field and get crazy. Um, there's a couple of, there's one in particular, there's one track in there called Do It. That's, yeah, I definitely that, think we're going to definitely need the that one. in the club. That's the yeah. club banger. Do it, do it. Everyone's, everyone's talking about Carnival, but Do It. Yeah, I was going to say Carnival yeah. with uh, yeah. Playboy, right? Playboy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a dope track too. I, I like, I actually, I love that album, uh, but Do It is going to be the the radio is going to be the club track hold on i'm going to pull up the city charts really quick because i'm carnival was number one i just want to see in your guys do, do it do it is a mustard beat so it's definitely heavily west coast influence yeah yeah he also uh infused uh back that ass up in it yeah. like parts of that song has back that ass up in it which is the record with travis on it, it had like good energy too was that the fuck you i think so or something there was a really good one. I was like, okay, this can, I, I can see this for the clubs, but here, I'll tell you, right? Okay. 
So Carnival's number one, Back to Me, is number two in the city charts. And then Fuck Something is, yeah, uh, fuck num something. is number three. So I don't know. You said you guys said it was you said do it was the best one. Yeah, it's not yeah. even charting and uh, that I've seen. That's what I yeah, I was kind of questioning that. No, it's definitely a it's definitely a club track. Shabazz has Shabazz, have you been playing that at all? I know it's so new. I'm not sure how many gigs you've done since the, the do the do it record is the only one that I've been kind of messing do with. Do people know it or are you just kind of breaking nah, it to them? No one knows no one okay. no one knows it yet. But uh -huh. he uh Ty Dolla Sign's cadence in the hook is it's the same thing of Soak City. So it's like the yeah. do it. Mm. So it's like if you hear it, it's even if familiar. you don't know it's familiar enough to where it's gonna work. So uh five, you got anything on it? Nah, man. I haven't cool. uh <laughs> really even Japan, in. man. Even Japan. So I know. I was stuck I was, I was out out the country, but um yeah, but those three uh talking, I I feel like there's gonna be a lot of edits coming out for that for the bigger rooms. And then yeah, do it carnival. That's the two I had on my list. And then, um, uh, I I saw this one kid play uh, everybody, uh, uh, like a a rip of it, and that I did like actually that really well too. Oh, I like yeah, that. That yeah, did yeah. really well. Yeah. Oh, actually, I, I did play everybody. Um, didn't really do much for me. You know, I, I think but, it might have just been the hook. I don't even think people were too familiar. Yeah. The verse is weak part. though. The, the yeah. Verse yeah, once is it like, goes into a song, then you lose them. The yeah. verse is like very preachy. It's like <clears throat> it just it doesn't it doesn't really flow right. But the hook is really strong on that record. Um, yeah, which didn't make the album. So, all right, all is yellow. Neil, you said you listened to that the I, lyrical lemonade. I did compilation album. Um, I liked it as just for listening. Like, there's really not much you can use in a in a in a party, but um. Uh, Juice World and Corday, that uh, the yeah, song Doomsday, Doomsday, that was good. That shit was sick. Yeah. All right, and then really Eminem quick. did a part, uh, a part two to it. Yeah. Shabazz. All right, so this is a question I got. These like, you're playing these rooms that are, I think, more hip hop driven. Would you mm -hmm. say? Does any of the records from like the Lyrical Lemonade, like the younger kid, I guess, you know, does that cross over to those rooms, or are they kind of more regional? Like rage they, music. Yeah, like not, is not it too the young. The, it's a little too young like you might get away with like a little bit of the playboy cardi but mo most of the parties i do is like 25 and up so it's like and you said a lot of athletes too right yeah it's a lot of athletes so you have some younger ones so yeah like destroy lonely and ken carson and yeet obviously some of it yeah. worked but when you get into like the little techas and all that it's just a little too young okay so that's yeah i i had no idea i was always questioning that because like I, I sometimes we'll get athletes coming in and I'm like, all right, the kids like this, but I don't know if it crosses like we'll have the bulls come in sometimes to the club. Yeah. And I'm like, and they'll, they'll say, play these records or whatever. And I kind of get where they're going with it. But then I know what the kids want where you're like, I don't know if this is going to work for both, even though it's hip hop, but it's not like, I don't know if it's going to cross over to them. So, uh, okay, well, that's good. That's good perspective. I, I was questioning that. Uh, what else we got? We got Justin Timberlake on SNL. I'm not sure if you guys heard that or saw his performance or even cared about the records. I mean, there's nothing really. I mean, I liked his single. Yeah, the new one? single's fire. Cool. I like it. Yeah. But like, do you hear the other one too? The Sanctified one? That was, that was, I was saying the SNL performance. He did another one that was like, it's just different. It's not, uh, the, the Selfish record's good. I just, I'm waiting for a club record because he doesn't, I don't feel like he has one yet for I the new like project. This. I feel like that record's a, it's an opening record. <laughs> I'd yeah. open with it. Yeah. I mean. Or I, close with it. it. It reminds me of uh, uh, Peaches, that uh, Justin Bieber record. Man, mm. I still get requests for that. But no, I'm saying it's like a good record, but it was not like, it's, it, 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 I don't know. It's not a banger, you know, in the club. It's just kind of like, all right, girls like it. It's a sing along, but it's not nothing like crazy. I, yeah, I'm used to Justin Timberlake, like dancing and all that. He, you know, he needs Timberland. That's what he needs. I think Lewis Bell did that record. So it was the dude that did all the Post Malone stuff. That would make uh, sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like the Timberland records, I, even the Pharrell records, he doesn't. I I don't feel <clears> like he, it's it's there yet. So I'm, I'm curious to see that project. Um, Jennifer Lopez on SNL. I don't know if it's relevant anymore. If you know, if any of her new stuff would be played out. Grammy Awards. You guys, uh, did you guys see any of that or had anything to say or cover? Uh, Neil, I see you up there. <laughs> nah, I I think uh, Jay Z did it the best. <laughs> that whole speech, I was like, oh damn, 
but he he's not wrong on any of that. <laughs> but do you think well, he was basically talking about Beyonce, right? Is what we're trying to allude to. I mean, thing? yeah, part of 100%. his speech was, but then he was also saying he was also talking about like. But do you think Beyonce deserved? Robbed. But do you think Ren- Beyonce deserved? Ren- Renaissance should have won. 100%. Album of the year, yeah. though. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. See, I didn't know if that project sure was should've. like. I don't know if the Beyonce project was that Renaissance album was like something that it's not like you're playing it today. And that's what I think the problem is on that record. It was a cultural album. shift, though, especially the timing that she put it out. So I think that's the problem with the Grammys is it's all subjective because it's not just obviously if we're just running it on numbers, Taylor Swift should win every award. Yeah. But it there has to be some sort of artistic uh consideration to all of it that's she's why pushing, killer mike won yeah you know? i think what you're saying is like she's pushing it forward she's not staying safe in the, like taylor swift will stay safe in her genre of music like, like taylor not- say taylor swift had a the greatest year but that even taylor swift fans probably argue that that wasn't her best album yeah that's you know, true like, too yeah scissor scissors album was amazing you know yep well, that's true. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, uh, and how did Killer look? He's dope. But how did Killer Mike take three, three Grammys? They didn't tell him. They beat this. out Drake and Travis Scott. And I'm not really even the biggest Drake fan, but like, come on. But do you think Travis had a like the best Killer album? Mike's? I think. I mean, out of out of ki- <laughs> minus Killer Mike, Metro Boomin had the best album. Yeah. Yeah. Metro had a really good album. Was he Metro nominated? Had yeah, he was nominated for Best Rap Album. Oh, yes. Okay. And you, I looked at even their Spotify streams. Killer Mike's highest streams ain't even Travis Scott's lowest stream. Yeah. Damn. I, it's that just true. It just blew my mind. I was like, and that's what that that the speech that Jay-Z was doing wasn't even just about Beyonce. It was across the board. Like, at least get it kind of right. Well, I think he's talking to like what the Academy votes, right? So just music producers. Well, it's the, and peer, it's the peers of the yeah. industry, I guess. So I don't know. But if you do, but it, I guess if you do ask like a real rap historian, who what, the purest, what was the yeah. best? The purest, they will say like, yeah, Kill, Killer Mike's album is top five. I don't know. I don't but think that's any. Crazy. I, don't, <laughs> I don't think any real rap peers is gonna be like, yeah, bro, Travis Scott, Utopia was the one. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. true, but like. We're talking like they might just have to make two different margin. genres. Like they have to just make two margin. different yeah. genres. I didn't even know he had a solo. I know I just know his Run the Jewel stuff. I yeah. was listening to that. All I know but. is that Adidas song that he had like 20 years ago, and I was like, "That's <laughs> that, that's the only Killer Mike record, <laughs> bro." When they posted the, it on uh, Complex's Instagram, I was oh my god, the, the comments were the comments oh, were, were insane. Dying. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids like, "Who the fuck is Killer Mike?" <laughs> <laughs> But when you uh, think of it, his album had fucking CeeLo Green. He had Andre. He had a verse from Andre Three Thousand. Like yeah. he had, he had Future. The elements, Future. I think Future, you know I mean? Future was on it too. Even yeah, even like, the comments were like Andre. Andre did it for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But like no no, I mean Killer Mike has like a cult following, like a yeah. huge following. But like yeah, he had Young Thug. Future, but, but yeah, but man, like it I was don't, just they I don't put all it. the commercial albums and then this one guy who's like the purest in it, and it's so subjective. So it's like, yeah, it's all over the I, board. I get why yeah. Killer Mike can win, but I can also understand why Travis could have taken it, or Drake and Savage, or fucking Metro Boomin. Oh, that's true. So. All right. Well, mixed bag there. Uh, what else? Uh, Lovers and Friends lineup. Did you guys see that? You know, I think that's a pretty. No, that, that looks seems, insane. Yeah, yeah. It, I think that's probably one of the best festivals I've I seen. I might actually all year. go this year. Tickets, oh, just tickets are not. By the way, okay. So I was looking at tickets for this thing. It was it was three hundred and fifty dollars just for one day. And wasn't just, it? Isn't it all one day? Or they switched? It it's to one two? day. It's one day. But then they said if you want to get on the because the first day sold out. So first of all, three fifty. Lollapalooza, I think, is like that's four days. And I think it's around the same price. So that's just crazy. I'm just saying, like, in terms of, you know, one, they have so many artists in one day. I think everyone's just doing their hits, which is kind of nice. It reminds me of, like, the radio shows. Like, when we used to do radio shows back in the day, it would be like, all right, you go on. T-Pain, you're doing just your hits. Well, T-Pain's a bad example. He has a lot. But, like, a Nina Sky. Be like, all right, you're doing your two songs. Get off the stage. And I feel like this thing is going to move really fast, which would be cool to go to. But 
seems like a pretty stacked lineup for at least that might, that might be too much to take in for one day and but then it's good though it's sold out and then they said the second day so i tried to get on the waiting list for a second day and it's it was the tickets were almost like four something they added an extra hundred to the ticket price on that so i mean it's a pricey concert but it has a really really strong lineup i mean they even have backstreet boys with usher with you know and then you have you know uh but then like you, you see the fine print like rick ross is like <clears throat> the smallest print on there and that guy's got hits too so yeah how did joe to see like such a small him and timberland i mean them and timberland but if you see some of the artists like ti has like little font like i mean ti's got a whole catalog of hits too yeah so it's just it's a it's a really that's a really strong uh lineup this year so congrats to them uh moving on to top five so let's just go through these really quick top five records you're playing out uh that's kind of i guess doing some doing some stuff uh anybody want to start with that um i can go top five right now i have a uh, nova's edit of uh 310 baby silk city i think i mentioned it earlier uh that's one of my favorite edits to play uh beat breakers rich baby daddy it's uh he took it up to uh or down to 130 bpms good for like you know little house big room set um a lot of edits on mine actually Diplo Express Yourself, Pickle, Remix, Edit, uh, Day and Night, Beat Breaker. A lot of big room stuff, man, since, you know, I was stuck in Japan. <laughs> Japan. And, uh, You're full stuck in Japan, Japan for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I was in full. It was the same weekend as uh, there was a, another festival out there. So like Kaigo and uh, Aoki, everyone was out there too. So, but yeah, very uh, big room influence on my top five right now. Besides uh, Silk City. Um, Neil, what do you got? For me, it's uh, Silk City. Uh, Tyler Water is still wow. huge. Jeez. 41 Bent is still big. <clears throat> um, and what crowds are you playing 41 Bent for? Is that is that <laughs> is that a younger crowd or is it like are we? Has it moved to the top? It, now, like to big room, point, top, or not you, big room, but like the real poppy rooms? Yeah, now it's I'm I'm doing it at pretty much all the bottle clubs. No oh, shit. Right. Yeah, but it's a they're they're New York. Yeah, so New York. It's, bottom, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, a little, <laughs> a little different. A little different out there. <laughs> <laughs> they're wired a little differently out here. So <laughs> uh, yeah, forty one Ben is still big, but it's like it might be at its peak. It's probably at its peak at this point. I mean, it's been um, like you you brought it up back in October. Yeah. So and like, but we don't have like outside of you know, you could do anything in my top five. You could do anything, Nikki. Um. Her new shirt, I spice yeah. kind of looking for the hose is huge now. Mm -hmm. Um, you said, wait, what song? Oh, wait, looking sexy for the red. hose, sexy red. Oh, sexy red. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I think you said, I spice looking for them. I'm like, what? All right, um, I spice isn't. Re I mean, as far as I mean, I haven't done the fart song yet, and it's terrible <laughs> fart. <laughs> that uh, now she's coming out with songs that everybody's just going to reduce down to. Oh yeah, she's got the fart song. Um, but I have a feeling that that one's going to be big. Yeah, it seems I haven't like done it yet. It's so new. It's so. charting. Um, Shabazz, what do you you got? Any records that you want to throw out? Yeah, I got uh, Boss Man D'Lo, the Getting With Me record, uh, Skilla Baby Mama. Um, stun a girl like that. Key Glock, let's go. Obviously, 310, baby. Um, and then Sexy Red, fuck my baby daddy. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah, that one yeah. I'm starting to get requests for, even though it's been out for a while. It's been out for a minute, but because she's because Ski and uh, all the other ones just kind of overlooked, overshadowed this one. Yeah, it's but, the newest one out of all of her shit. What's it called? Fuck my, Fuck, baby my daddy. Baby daddy. Fuck my baby daddy. You know the yeah. pow, 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 that's my booty meat, right? That's, <laughs> yep. that's the lyrics, right? That's hey, Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Do it one more time. It's pow, 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 <laughs> pow, that's my booty meat. Got it. All right. <laughs> or no, that's my booty cheeks, and then it goes into booty meat. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I, okay. I don't make them. I just play them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got. I just got uh, the Ice Spice record. I think the Fart record is going to be something. I got. Uh, I have a Delhi, the Takumi hype edit 
and it, it goes it switches the beat up but it's it's pretty dope um and then i have uh i like that Nicki minaj future is kind of growing on me a little bit the press play record are you guys are you playing that in your clubs shabazz yeah okay uh, i didn't wait, know wait, which was, one which one are we talking about it's it's called press play with future Nicki minaj are you guys playing the Nicki drake record at all what needles yeah uh, I played it once. It didn't do anything. It hasn't done too much, but I think it just needs a little bit more time and a few more people playing it. Yeah, I like, that was it actually was, that was the biggest record I feel like that came out with the album initially. Like when we first when that album came out was in November or whatever it was. People Needles was on the charts. Yeah, mm. and then everything it's a started. Sick record. Yeah, and then everything the uh, fuck the club up took that over. Yeah. And then everybody was another one that uh are you playing everybody shabazz yeah or that that actually that actually is getting a big reaction it's it, it especially in the uh in my crossover where it's like half open format crowd plus half like the, my type of crowd yeah it, it, it still works okay that, i got a question yeah, for that, your i got a question for your crowd then all right so if you're if you got some ball players in there what what are like three records are just a must go to so no, you skip, would have to like somebody walks in yeah skill a baby mama uh you know how people play dreams and nightmares is like they're if they're doing an open format set that, that would be see, like, yes that would be my <laughs> so yeah you see you see them walk in you're like you're, you're directly talking to me when you're yeah, saying so, that i felt yeah so i play king vaughn uh crazy story wow yeah. so oh there's, shit. There's, okay. some, there's, yeah, some, yeah. there's some cultural records like like uh, we play that in chicago like king vaughn like that yeah of course yeah, that's chicago, like, so like, yeah 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 like little dirk back door is a big record for me and it's are like those are those are the chicago records album. do they do well in the bay like the king vaughn's and the dirks and yeah really chicago chicago detroit detroit is like the bay area's cousin so any Skilla Baby, V's, Babyface Ray, Ice War Vezo, PZ. Why, like, why is it, Detroit and, oh, T, and T Grizzly why, was like that T, too? It's the because it, it's almost the same tempo. It's yeah, like it, a lot of it is the the that baseline. It's like Bay. It's like Bay Area sounds sonically. Oh. Their music sounds like our music. Yeah, mm. it's I, synonymous. Honestly, with each like when I heard uh, what was that one big record from T Grizzly? I thought First that was Bay. Up. Yeah, that, yeah, I thought that was up. a Bay Area record. <laughs> yeah. From from out here, it it did big here, but I was like, that's a Bay Area song. Yeah, but it wasn't. Why does so the Bay? Why does the Bay like? Uh, what's it? What's the? Was it the jerk music? Right? Is that? No, that's LA. That hyphy. Oh, hyphy. that's LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hyphy. We, yeah, we, but like we had hyphy move it. Okay, yeah, but someone was like, someone was telling me when I was playing, I was doing something, and they're like, they were giving me a bunch of Bay records, and they're like, oh, you got to play the jerking music. I don't know if it's because it, maybe it's just a dance jerk, I guess. like the jerk, well, no, like. The jerk can the, play, be played in the Bay, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, LA's music and the Bay's music, it's damn yeah. near almost the same type of music. Yeah. Like, there right. is, there, like, Knickknack or uh, DJ Mustard and Pilo. Like, if you talk about the big producers from the West Coast, Mustard from LA, Pilo from the Bay, it's almost the same thing. Shit. So, that's YG why a lot of our music. Over. Yeah, why, YG's one of his biggest market. Like, right now, if you come to the Bay Area, bpt and uh left right all the yeah. yg records still huge yeah. wow. like huge huge cool we're gonna dig a little bit more into this um coming up uh because <laughs> i got a, i got a lot of questions man all right uh st <laughs> sticky Hopefully situations <laughs> uh this is something that neil just came up with this is a segment that he made up and it actually makes it's pretty dope so if a manager was to walk up to you and ask for dance hall records what which which one would you play or a couple that you would play um i don't want to speak on this because mine's i'm gonna wait till you guys do yours first <laughs> so, <laughs> and i'll just say it's yes it's okay no. jersey whatever no, you're playing no, whatever man. you're gonna play is whatever you're gonna play mm -mm. Uh, you know there's mm -mm. no judgment i get it <laughs> no, i'll let you guys take i'll let you guys do this first so uh whoever wants to start off their you know if there was a manager that walked up and said play some dance hall records what would you play um, somebody could take that away first. I mean, Sean Paul get busy. Any uh, Diwali rhythm, start there, and then you just go. You know, yeah. Shabazz, I, I would say no more games. Yeah, I would, yeah. Uh, that sexy body, the 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 Sasha yeah. P record. Um, is no letting go considered? Uh, record? It's, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's, it has to be dance hall. Yeah, that, that, is that tempo? I, is it tempo? It's, a, it's yeah. the same. Uh, they used to have dance hall or not, yeah. that, that's having a resurgence. I don't know yeah. if it's just yeah, the I Bay Area thing, yeah. but that, yeah. that, that, that record is definitely too. having its resurgence. But yeah, wow. Murder, She Wrote. Murder, She Wrote. Yep. Action. Yep. Action. Wow. Action's uh, a good one. I yep. usually slam in Egyptian. Oh, oh, yeah. Egyptian's a Egyptian, good one. Yeah. With or without Nikki. Yeah, with. I think the original is just as good. Yeah. Limb by Limb. Yep. Um, Movado, um, Serrani, Serrano, Serrano, Serrano. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no more games, no more games, yeah. and then uh, so special. I would you call um, is Rupe tempted to Rebel? touch? Oh. Ooh, tempted to touch? Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, that, it was a, it was a different uh, genre though, but it was I would play them all together. What was Rupi again? Uh, it was Soka, maybe. Uh, now you're getting a little. You're getting really <laughs> deep. Rupi uh, tempted to touch. Yeah. Uh, what about it. vodka and Red Bull? Would that be considered dancehall? Yeah. Beanie Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge record here. Like, if you were to go into that world, I'll tell you right now, no manager would ever come up to me out here to ask to play dancehall. Like, it's <laughs> not a thing, right? If I were a manager, <laughs> Jersey. You would ask me. You would just fuck I with me. That's even, what you would do. I, I you wouldn't would just, even bother. Yeah. <laughs> you just, look at you, you just, be like, I would just look at it more <laughs> pale than I do right now. As soon as you come up there and say that, I'd be like, I just oh, look fuck. at, I, I just look at that bottle spender. I'd be like, we ain't got it. Listen, <laughs> yeah. I know where I, I, I know, I know my safe zone, right? When you start putting me out of my safe zone. I, I know like one or two <laughs> records and then I start insulting people because they're like, that's not dance hall. Like I start offending. <laughs> yeah, I start Ruth, offending that's, the whole crowd. That's, when that's they're that's like, yeah, we need to you play Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> listen, guys, I know my pockets. Okay. We're not going to push them. Um, so, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, but uh, Tempted to Touch is uh, Soka, Reggaeton. That's what uh, the genre is listed as. Okay. Okay. Or reggae. Yeah. Cool. Let's move to Sneaky Slappers. What do you guys got? If you have anything this week, uh, I, I'll you know I'll throw some out real quick. I got. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, like a super sneaky one, but love in this club just because I'm not sure if it's in every set you guys play, but I, I mean that record just always seems to go off. Um, also, Neo, let me love you. Uh, Bruno Mars, grenade. Uh, I had Jay Sean down. And Tile Cruz Dynamite. Those were just some of the those records I kind of have been bringing back that seems to have been moving. So um, Sneaky Slappers Resurgence record, a resurgence yeah, record? like just a left field okay. record. I mean, like if you're not okay. playing, I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know when the last time you played Bruno Mars Grenade, but yeah, but you but you get a crowd reaction out of it, yep. or it's kind of like, holy shit, I accidentally dropped it. You know what happens a lot too? Like you'll get some somebody a manager or a chick or somebody who's like hey can you play this one record you're like oh what the fuck i gotta play it and it goes off and you're just like yeah. shit i didn't i didn't think that was gonna work and it did so i think that was like the whole idea behind this this whole thing okay neil or five you guys got any? um i got club going up mcconan oh wow is actually working again yeah. uh wait that's a tuesday record right yeah 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 oh shit yeah, all right, uh, I gotta add that right now. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, Africa Toto. I mean, it never really left my uh, my rotation. I have a pretty cool mix with it. I do, but it actually really worked uh, recently. Hmm. Didn't know the kids love Africa. <laughs> the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, we taken over. I dropped just because I haven't played it in a while and. Uh, it did work a little bit, but it's kind of still like a uh, filler feel to it. But, you know, that's my three uh, sneaky. Chabaz, you got any? Uh, You're I've new been to playing, this segment, so yeah. I've been playing Keisha Cole last night a lot with Diddy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Still, I still oh, yeah. oh then, Jersey, uh, you put me on that one too, didn't you? You're like, yo, everybody loves it up here. Yeah. I mean, I think Keisha Cole had a big resurgence yeah. for the yeah. young, like the younger kids i, mean, I think the older people love, love is it. like the one of the biggest songs of the night still yeah yeah still yeah. and then i probably uh the timbaland way i are record it's it's been yeah. working uh oh wow the, yeah estelle and kanye american boy 
pretty much those three in order. Yeah. yeah. And then I, and no, then that, I that's, that's perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> coming out of the pandemic, the way I are, um, promiscuous girl and American boy yeah. were like, they were waiting for that. So remember, I don't know if you remember when sexy back came out, like it was like that, like they weren't leaving the club until they heard it. And then when they heard it, they were out. Yeah. <laughs> the way I are was, yeah. And that's a weird tempo too, right? It's like 117 or something. Where right. are? Yeah. It it's was like, like ah, 114, 114, 114. Yeah. But it's like, it's like that no man's land when you get into those. No, but there was like a, like, I love you where I are. No, like, I'm saying that, if you're playing that now though, oh. like, like back in the day, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah I can play set. promiscuous girl and you can play some other things. But then it's like, you know, you're playing way I are right now. I'm like, I you don't gotta, know where. A lot of I'm a piano can get mixed into yeah, it. All that's that true. Yeah. Like 115. Yeah. yeah. That's another question I got on my <laughs> list here. <laughs> that, new, new question. <laughs> All right. Yeah. New question. Uh, Neil's making up segments. I'm just going with new questions every single time. All right. Last uh, last thing. We have Nicki Minaj slappers. We're just going to run through those real quick. If some records that little like, you know, Nicki Minaj has been she's been on these charts with the new records, but I think some old ones you can throw back in. Uh, I got Blazing with Kanye. Uh, that's one. I had that too. Uh, Bees in the Trap. Uh, and I'm also gonna throw uh, uh, what's it called? Did it on him? That's, oh, that's on mine too. <laughs> that was on mine. All right. Anybody else? I have. A, um, I know it's not a Nikki record, but uh, Girl on Fire. Oh, that one crushes. I do. Girl on too. Fire. That, that goes on yeah. like more like a hip hop set. <laughs> more like fire. a pop set. Pop. Whose Nikki. record is that? Uh, Alicia. Right. Oh, Alicia the, the Alicia yeah. Keys record. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. You just drop that on the one and you're you're good. I've never played that record. Oh my oh, god. Dude, you can just is... echo out and just press play. Oh, right. You can, you can play go. uh Party USA right after, Jess. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but being you labeled as that, yeah. I was using it as an example. Or, or, I don't play that record. Or, or, chan or, or chandelier. <laughs> chandelier goes oh, that off. That I do. <laughs> I do Chandelier's girl on good. fire into chandelier. You actually do that? <laughs> yeah. I have this edit where like literally it's just the screaming part. So wow. when Girl on Fire, when they're screaming that, they go right into a one, two, three, one, two, three, and then it just explodes again. Wow. They're just screaming. That's a that's a combo where they just lose their voice and then wow. Shabazz, are you playing no Chandelier at all? Are you playing? I'm guessing I, you're not I, playing Chandelier. I have not played it. No. <laughs> <That's> not. <laughs> got it. Um, you got any Nikki records that are kind of left field that, you know. The itty bitty over the donk beat goes crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then oh, obviously shit. like moment for life has had a little resurgence. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's been huge. Only, cool. only is massive. Here. Only, oh, yeah. only I haven't actually oh, dropped mm. only. Oh right my now. god, just drop it right at the right verse? at the very beginning. And, no, it's no, like that Nikki dude, and Drake dude, side. Do both those verses, and just wow. let it go. The oh, <laughs> I got balloons. How do? How did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> we're still learning this out here. <laughs> how did the balloons come anyway uh only did it on them feeling myself and monster wow only yeah. the kanye and uh nikki, nikki part <clears throat> i like no letting go with the nikki part the sean the sean kingston record maybe it's just me but okay yeah that <laughs> <is> definitely just <laughs> All right, we're gonna move like, on. Yeah, we're gonna move on to the next segment. All right, this is uh, Shabazz. Welcome again to the show. Thank you for putting up with us for the last fifty-eight <laughs> minutes and uh, and contributing to all of our uh, our, our stuff here. But uh, yeah, so if you guys don't know, Shabazz is from the Bay Area, um, and uh, he kind of uh, holds it down with you know, like he said earlier, a lot of. Um, some of the athlete parties and he does uh some of the top rooms out in the area i guess like explain the bay i think that's like or explain one i guess maybe a brief history of where you grew up and just so people have an idea of like I, I, where you come from and then we can i guess speak on the bay area because you know for me i i was you know i, th I say san francisco but yeah. bay is a lot bigger it's, than that yeah, it's it's, it's pretty big. Yeah. So I was originally born in Oakland, California, but uh, I grew up in like Sonoma County, which is like 45 miles north. Um, me and I don't know, five, you know, DJ, hey, man, we went to high school together. Yeah, yeah. That's why I started DJing. I was carrying his fucking records in the clubs. 
but um been living in san francisco since then had a couple stints in new york and atlanta um there's only really three places and it's san francisco oakland and san jose those are like if you're going out nightlife those are those are the only places historically san francisco has been the leading place um post pandemic it's been a little bit uh on the downside as far as the amount of venues we have um but there still is a big scene in the bay area especially in san francisco it just might not be the infusion lounge traditional open format uh 10 years ago clubs that yeah, were probably yeah. more familiar you know the love and propaganda is i know that one and that's just closed that just that closed, just closed. Too, yeah we yeah. just did the finale party like two weeks ago yeah. the problem is is the the rent is still so fucking high in san francisco and uh the nightlife and the safety and everything that's going on with the city is not um it's not on par with being able to pay these high ass rents. Right. Are you so, guys getting the crowds? So like what when I used to play out there, it was there was a lot of dudes. And I'm not like it was just a lot more guys than girls. And it was like a lot of they used to say it was like a lot of tech people. And they were like, yeah. those are the ones that are spending the money. So like play for the tech people. I never played like the real Bay Area rooms. I played yeah. more of the poppy, you know, nerdy yeah. rooms, I guess. <laughs> Which and, rooms? Yeah. Thanks, Where's Neil. It? I can see him. He's just like he's he's waiting to say Miley Cyrus right there. I knew that it was. But do you remember? Um, do you remember any of the names of the places? Infusion. Yeah, but Infusion. like you know, I played Infusion. Yeah, it was it was like very. They said keep it very top forty, like Super or top even 40. EDM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did uh, Love and Propaganda. They told me no hip hop yeah. because like that's when yeah. I first o that, that place first opened. They were like, do yeah. not play any hip hop records in yep. here, and they were very yeah. strict on because like they were like, we don't want to get that crowd and i didn't really yeah. understand because i never went to other rooms and then uh i went to uh what's the other one what's the different levels temple, uh, temple yes yeah and like downstairs was all hip-hop mm -hmm. and then upstairs was like hard edm yeah and uh just seeing that and then like a big fight broke out in front like uh it was just you know just seeing the different rooms and the different like but i i, I get what you're saying on like I think the challenge always seemed like they always had so many guys and they would always have to be like, hey, they're the ones that are spending money because everybody else has to drive over a bridge. Is that correct to get to yeah. downtown? Well, or something like that? well, back then, actually, there was a lot of people that actually lived in San Francisco. So now all, the, the work from home, uh, there's not a lot of people that actually live in San Francisco. And the people that used to 10 years ago commute from the hour radius, 60 mile radius of the Bay Area, we only went to San Francisco that like you that that's where you went to party. Now you have if you live on this side of the bridge, you're just going to hang out in Oakland, Berkeley. You can go to the nice suburbs in Walnut Creek. They got their little things going on, little bar lounges. If you live in San Jose, they got there's a club in San Jose called Nova. These motherfuckers are packed every oh, yeah. Friday and Saturday as if the as, as if it was pre pandemic, like they don't come here to San Francisco. But before like the days where you had infusions, they all would come and migrate to San Francisco. And like that was like, you're was, saying like back in the day, like 10 years ago, that was the only area, yeah, like, but now like, everything is branched out where you can Everything's go like, branched out. So you don't, if you live in Sonoma County, you don't have to come to San Francisco to have a, a you know, to go out for the weekend. Well, I'm sure the Uber costs too, just to go over that bridge. Like if people aren't driving, you got to pay what well, $50 to get in the car to go to San Francisco. Or it's whatever. not only the Uber, we have a big problem. It's, we've always had this problem, but we have a problem with, it's called bipping in the Bay. So people break into your cars, really like there's, you're, there's like a 50% chance. I watch if those you have videos. an SUV, your, yeah. car, your, your car is going to get bipped. So like, wait, like if it's parked on the street or in a parking garage or how does that Anywhere I've had my I've had my car bipped in the Macy's shopping center parking lot underground. What are they Union taking? Do they see is there stuff like exposed or is it just like you're doing it for fun? No, they 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 if, like they're shit. If you have car, an SUV, yeah. yeah. If you yeah. have shit in your car, they're gonna break your window. I've had my window bipped with nothing showing. Like we we know we're from here, so we know like don't leave not even an iPhone wire in your car. But That's occasionally wild. your shit will still get bit. So a lot has of it people, always been like that, or is it more recently? It's, it's after always the been like that. It's always been like that. But recently, it's been there's been a surge of it. So a lot of people don't even want to deal with driving across the bridge to pay for parking, 
and then ha potentially have their car bipped and then the clubs aren't it's it's not what it used to be 10 10 15 years ago genres of music has changed so 10 years ago when you was doing infusion lounge it was like the open format mashup was huge yeah so and then it turned into like hip-hop and then like post pandemic it's like there is no consistent nightclub that if you want hip hop, you just know to just go here on this night. It could be tempo on a Saturday night. You might think it's EDM upstairs. It could be Bollywood. You know what I mean? For the most part, they try to stay consistent. But post pandemic, what? a lot of these, uh, you know, like R&B specific parties or throwback parties have been going up. What would you say the difference? I guess what's the difference between like a San Francisco and Oakland? or so, uh, San Jose? Like what's the difference music wise, culture wise? Like wh what are the difference? What are you gonna so, get? In those so San Francisco, you get more of a traditional nightclub. Bottle service, bottle girls, uh, professional sound, real equipment. Oakland is more of, it's like a loungy, bar -y type scene, but they, they there's a place called Cry Baby. There, it's DJs that own it. So it's like, you know, they have top tier sound in there and everything. Not too big on bottle service, but they do all of their parties are um, theme parties, every yeah. single one. Like so you DJ don't just driven, go, right? you, yeah. yeah, they're super DJ driven, they're super themed. So if you just if you just think you're going to like a love and prop to listen to like nightlife music, yeah. you're not, cry baby, you might go and be like, it's a Frank Ocean theme night. And oh, they're that's playing dope, like, yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm there. Like <laughs> Oakland has that scene. And then San Jose, you just have a big local scene. Oh yeah, no, nah, they're so, dope out there too. They're, they're still a little, I wouldn't, they're not behind, but like you play Pitbull in San Jose, it's going crazy. Really? Yeah. Is it, is it just because it's, is it more of a like a pop audience or is it just like, what do you- Even though it's only an hour away, it is more of- It's tech too, right? Infusion. Yeah, yeah it's more yeah. of infusion Vegas type of crowd. So Rihanna and Calvin Harris, big record, you know, yeah. like- when we do our parties, it's it's when it's like the athletes and the we I call them like professional clubbers, like the people that you know the girls that fly out to Turks and Caicos and they yeah. go to live oh. on, a, on, on a Sunday, like it's ve they're they're on the needle. They, what area the, are you doing with those people? Like is it Oakland so I, or, I, or San no, Francisco? No, I, I do I do mostly San Francisco, and then I do mostly everywhere. But like if I do San Jose, I have to cater. I can't just go fully in, and. That's been kind of like one of the. So the San Jose is you're saying San Jose is more of like the more com real commercial stuff. Commercial, super commercial. And then Oakland is a little bit more like you can kind of go in a little bit more with the, like the pocket. Well, Oakland like they 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 got places that are super big on Afro beats. It's more cultured. Okay, more culture. And then San Francisco yeah. is like it's more nightlife. If you want a real nightlife experience of like a nightclub like you're still going to want to go to san francisco you're basically just, saying they put the most money into building their build outs and stuff like yeah, that yeah kind yeah, of yeah. Like, production and hospi probably hospitality hospitality and yeah like it's it they they have real tables and real sections you know there's which, other which one has like the best crowd is it like are the crowds the same in everyone or they're like kind no, of the primier crowd, the, crowds in certain areas and like people well, dressed up or whatever so the San Jose, they dress up like they're in Vegas. It's insane. Every girl Shit. is like wearing dresses, which is like, wow, that's <laughs> kind of crazy. Oakland, it's a little <laughs> bit more, it's a little bit more laid back. So there, it's more of like people just going, like in, in, in theory, going to like a lounge or like a kickback or like a bar, but they, they, they're still turning up. And then San Francisco, you still have it's like a, it's it's all of them in one. So you have some tech people, you have the regular nine to fivers, and then you have, if we're doing a party, you have people coming out that are like either athletes, influencers, local, uh, other people in the industry. What's the demographic on these? Like, is it mainly, because I, like you have a big Asian following or population out there. Yeah. Like, uh, and then like, I remember, I remember I was playing out there, they're like, oh, we're gonna go to the Asian club. And I was like, you guys just have a straight Asian club? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. and I was kind of, and I think it was called, was it Arena or something? I forgot Arena, what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And they're like, on Mission Street. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. we should go there. And I was like, wait, like I'm pretty white. Am I gonna like, is it okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, you know, you're good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, so I, I think, it, what's the, you know, what's the demographic? Is there, what's the mix of people in these rooms? Is it so? There's not. There's, there. Arena is 
not there anymore. It's a different club now. But they were they owned a I think a club in Koreatown in LA, and then opened yeah, up yeah. arena here. So it and was then, super uh, clientele was Asian based. That doesn't exist too much. There's like a couple clubs where the owners are Asian, so obviously like they're 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 following and promoters are more on the Asian base. But for the most part, it's pretty mixed. You got white, you got Asian, you got Mexicans, you got blacks, you got now. Nah, I've been seeing a lot of Indians. A lot of Indians are coming oh, out, shit. and not necessarily techie Indians, like younger Indians that I never really used to see, that are coming more to our type of art. Like I'm getting more requests for indian music than anything oh yeah the no. same thing with new york too. it's insane like What's obviously like is it like is it like hip-hop indian music or is it it's like traditional they got like, indian music not they bollywood. either want no some of them want bollywood but there's like there's like two artists it's like this dude ap dillon, AP dillon yeah. and yep. uh sidhu who's like yeah. this guy that died in india oh that you was know, a guy that he, got shot or got killed or he was like yeah, a rapper they call right? him, yeah, yeah. yeah he called him like the tupac of india you yeah, play yeah, yeah. Shit okay, in the yeah. club they lose their mind yep but I've never, pre-pandemic, no one would ever, rec- like, all I had was, like, the Jay-Z and Punjabi MC record. That was, like, it. Now, that's like... Weird. Now I don't like, even touch that record. Yeah, you don't even yeah. touch it because that's that. They look at you crazy if you play that. But yeah. I still touch it. I, yeah. <laughs> I know. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, I don't get... I mean, yeah. I, I, well, I knew that, that, that you said, like, the Indian Tupac guy, like... Yeah. that uh people have come up to me and they said that and I, I didn't know what it was they were talking about referring yeah. to but then i started doing some research on it and i was like it was pretty uh he, yeah he's got he's got hits and people really uh, go off but it, those. it's it's still there'll be 10 indian in the clubs and they're the only ones that know what the fuck is going on so it doesn't like, cross over yeah oh no no no, no. it's n- nowhere near remotely oh. even crossing over yeah like does uh um the like that when you play for the more polished crowds or the athletes and stuff like that is it still pretty mixed or are the rooms primarily hip-hop or what do you what do you usually so, play in those rooms so the i kind of have an advantage out here because they they just kind of let me do whatever i want but i still like i'm not going to go in there and just fucking play murder music for three four hours straight because i know that doesn't do anything for anyone jersey so, looks scared the second you said murder music he's like yeah well they, wait, I, like it's, it's crazy wait, I, don't, I so, so we used to play it used to be called trap music because it yeah. was like drug dealing music now it's like push icy mass murder music oppy music Wow. And that that like I try not to go too deep into into that when it's uh, like a love and proper temple because it's like you still have regular white people. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but for the for the most part, it's a it's it's a predominantly hip hop set. I will call it open format because I'm mixing in fucking like Bad Bunny, you know. Okay, but I'm so not pro- I'm not would- going full like EDM. Like you might get like. Uh, uh, like you, uh, the big Latin artist that works in Miami, fucking uh, the the big the big ones, uh, La Mama, La Mama, what the fuck? What's oh, the oh, El Alpha. Yeah, like El Alpha and like all the Bad Bunny shit. But I'm not going. I, the Hugo, there is some the Hugo records and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, so but you, we're not we're not going full like. Do you have a big Latin? Is there a big Latin? Yeah, there's a big Latin crowd out here. Out here, okay. Yeah, they got so they got they got they got clubs now that's only do Latin music. Oh shit! I did the strip club That's out like there too. Everywhere. What was the strip club that uh, we played out there? Uh, vanity. Oh, vanity. vanity. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I didn't it know was it was a strip night? club. No, it's it was a hybrid. A, it's it a just, hybrid. They 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 wanted it to be the eleven of San Francisco. Yeah, it definitely was not that. It was. It, it, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. I mean, this is when they first did it, and I didn't know it was a strip club. So yeah. it was. Uh, it was. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a cool. You know, the room was cool, but it was. Uh, yeah not not there yet but yeah uh so the crowds are pretty well mixed like but you're not playing any edm or house for the most part it's more nah if i play house it's because i just kind of want to play it like, okay that that's the like if i'm if 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 i'm if i'm in temple and i see that i could pull it off i'll play gorgon city or like some cascade oh, or wow. yeah. fucking, oh, shit. Okay. uh peggy i'll play that shit. but that's only if i can kind of sense that i can get away with it so for the athletes, I think I'm more, you know, like I get more, I have a lot of questions for that because those rooms, yeah. like, you know, the ball players always will come in and they'll be very like, very specific, very specific, very, but, like, yes, but very. I always had that problem with like an athlete will come in or a basketball player will come in or, you know, I'm just, 
I think hockey players are a little bit different in terms mm -hmm. of music wise, but they'll be like, hey, play this one record, this little baby record, but that's yep. like, it's a, it's a B side record that no one's yep. ever heard of, but that's what they listen yep. to in the locker room or what they yep. do when they're doing warm ups. And I think that's for, for me, that throws me off more than anything because I go, I no one, no crowds ever heard this, no girls ever heard this record, but your table is going to go off when we play it. What are some of those records? Or maybe another question is if you were, if I was to, if I was playing for uh, a, a team, right, a ball team or whatever, wh what percent of records you need to actually play of those, or what would you do in those situations? Like, would you cater everything to that? Or would you be like just throw one just to keep them happy and so, then go back to more? So, if it's a pure party that we're doing, it's four hours of that. That's that's what we do. It's literally four hours of like damn near B side records because everyone in there knows no, all so. those records. So now, like, if you're talking like a love and prop that I have to DJ. Oh, 12 to 12.45 is like, Big Sean, I don't fuck with you. All that shit, I have to just get that out of the way because there's still a dance floor. Yeah, yeah. And those people don't know anything that's going on. So but if you the have minute, the players, if the players are coming in at that point, if they're there at 12, 12.45, do you care? Or do you uh, just say, hey, no, no, I, I, there's, a, it, it just kind of depends on, on the vibe of the night. If at the end of the day, the, the G pop on the dance floor, they might buy a beer or two. But this table, like like John Morant comes into the club, it's solely based on the music that's being played, how much money he might end up spending. And and if it, those are the type of guys, if they hear two or three songs in a row that they're not fucking with, like they'll be like, I'm out of here. Like, this is whack. So Shit. it's like, I, I kind of like, if I see them kind of come in, I, I slowly make the transition. And then by one, they usually come late. So that's the beauty. The, the regular people come early, these guys come late, but once it transitions into that 1 a.m., th the dance floor doesn't know what the fuck is going on because they don't know any of this music. And we're going like, we're going deep NBA Youngboy, Rob 49, yeah. Dirk, Baby, uh, Skilla Baby, fucking King Vaughn, like all that shit. So there's some players that they look at me crazy if I play Drake. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? I would not survive in this room. Yeah. But I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, look, I think we all can get by, but like, I think it's just, you know, like you're saying, it, it's, uh, I think one, it is the, it, it's the hardest. I think personally, it's the hardest and like an open format club like Vegas, that shit is intimidating as fuck too. Like doing like a Hakkasan or Omnia, like see, but like for the, the build see, like, up that's and breakdowns to me, yeah. that's more stressful. To me, like, see what you're saying. I think, you know, for us, we're used, like, I mean, I, I was groomed on that for like, you know, that like my training, I guess you would say, like, you know, coming up under people and, and listening to people and they say, this is how you program these types of nights. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm like, that's easy. Like, I know yeah. what these people want. But for you, you're saying that if these ball players come in, like I can play a couple records for them, like, and I'll like, you know, get a head nod or like, you know, kind of yeah. say what's up. But then it's like after five records, it's like, fuck, you know, because you got your crowd in front of you or you got it. That balance, I think, is the hard thing is and, and you're able to, I guess, you know, kind of well, make everybody the, happy on that. And the hard part about it is they not only want the music that just came out Thursday night, two nights ago. They also want the B-side records that were on mixtapes from 10 years ago. So Jeez. if do you have coding crazy by future? That's the a very random record that a normal DJ probably does never even heard of, but those are the records. Like, like how do you stay up on this stuff? I lived in Atlanta and I DJed in a couple strip clubs in 2009 when trap music was like first ascending. So like I fully got emerged into all that. Wow. But do so people then, feed you records or do they just you just do it off of like if a, if a player is like, yo, you got to have these or like, not, how do you I'm, get I'm just, these records? I'm, I'm just kind of up on it between SoundCloud and YouTube and Spotify. Like, I'm just kind of hip to like what the fuck is going on. And then obviously, yeah, like like Debo will come request some songs. Where I'll be like, what the fuck is this, bro? Like he's requesting like artists from Mississippi. They, they got like 80,000 followers on fucking Spotify. <laughs> But then like I start listening to that and then I see that they got a future with this person. And then you, you know, you, there's ways you go on Instagram, you see, you know, little babies following them. And so you start figuring out like, OK, this is probably someone I should know, like Big yeah. Boogie, Finesse Two Times. Um, there's all the guys from Detroit, um, Skilla Baby, Ice War Vezo, uh, V's, Babyface Ray. Um, 
there, there's a lot. It's oh, YTB Fats. It's it's endless. Boston. Uh, I just Boston got put George on a from fucking. Fats. There's a guy from Florida. I could play ten of his songs in the club, and it goes crazy. And I think the a normal the, person has probably never heard of this guy. I think the biggest thing is like we see these records and they'll come out on like, you know, whatever, if it's Headliner Music Club or whatever. And you're like, all right, uh, you know, that that key, that key Glock record. I was like, OK, I yeah. just like it. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, it's, it just sounded dope. And I was like, all right, cool. But I would not know if that was a record that it would resonate with well, the see, players in there. That's that's the hard part, because I have seen DJs. Uh, and there's no shots to them or anything because it's like at the end of the day i can kind of I, I attest to this on the house music side it's if headliner music or any of the mp3 pools put songs over there for the most part you know if my ears if i like this house record i'll download it it doesn't necessarily work for the hip-hop you might download a trap record and be like because i downloaded it, it's gonna work and they might look at you crazy and be like this this ain't the one you're playing the wrong migos record off the album yeah yeah. That's happened to me a lot. What was the uh, and, fuck? What was the what was the one record? I played the the Chris Brown version of it. You Superhero. Hero, oh, oh you shit! Played, you played uh, the second uh, half. Yeah, the so I didn't know that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, this okay. Okay, let me rephrase this. The record just came out, and the the Bulls walked in and like like Alonzo Ball and all them, and they were like they're like, hey, play Superhero. I'm like, yeah, I got you. And I didn't know. You I just had part, part one. Of, and every part every hip hop record's always been like play part two, play part two. You know, like yeah. everything is always like the better version is part two. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't listen to it, and I dropped it, and it was like that was the worst shit I've probably ever <laughs> done in the last ten years, man. But, like the, but the didn't looks I give got. Him part one, didn't give them part one. He just no, went into I part still didn't know. I didn't know there was moving. a part one that was like I was like, man, this is what they want. I was like, <laughs> but yes, to what you were saying, it's very true. I think that you have to have that understanding of knowing what records are just because it is you know on a on a chart or whatever you have to know like that, that that's the one or this is the yeah. one or and like like your- like if i'm in an open format room and they you know the new thing is they put the phone the, the phone up with the requests in your face like play this record if i see that they request empire state of mind by jay-z it, it's not the same effect if i don't play their record versus John ja Morant standing next to me and is like, "Yo, can you play NBA YoungBoy Fathers?" You know, and they, and they, and when they when they ask you, they for some reason they just expect everyone to know the the, the songs that only like they know. Yeah. So for the like me and Debo have a cool relationship because the shit he be asking for is the shit that I play. So it's like there's never a moment where it's like, "Bro, I don't got it." It's like you know. Like we we're we're on you guys the same are dialed page. in together. Yeah, you guys yeah, are dialed, dialed in. in. Like me and Draymond, we're dialed in. These yeah. like Ke- like I remember vividly when Kevin Durant first came from uh when he got traded to the Warriors. He's from Maryland, uh, Washington DC area. There's an artist out there named Shy Glizzy that I am I love Shy Glizzy. I've I've loved this guy's music since like 2014. So I start playing like five Shy Glizzy records in a row because I this I like his songs. And then Kevin Durant is like why the fuck do you know this? And then there's a relationship right there based off of that. So you have that connection just because you knew, like you yeah, actually you did just, your homework if, on that. Yeah. Yeah. If you just, if it's, if you just, if you, if, if you in New York and you know, like a, 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 a player from fucking opposing team comes and you know, they from LA play blue bucks clan. They go, they gonna notice that. I just got put you up know? on them too. Yeah. Hell, like they, I had, um, they take that I shit one super of the serious in, uh, in a room and I was texting you. I was like, yo, what do I play? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, he's in the room. He, he was in a, where were you? Dream? I was at Highlight Room. And, uh, yeah, Highlight. Who was highlight. it? It was Clay. He, Clay yeah. Thompson was there. I was like, yo, yo, he, what, do I, what do I play? <laughs> so I, I just texted Clay. I was like, yo, you at Dream? He's like, yeah, you here? And I was like, nah, my DJ's the home. He's like, yo, tell him to play these records. And I just uh, fired. Crazy. Weirdly enough, it was Started Afrobeat and I just fired it off. <laughs> is Afrobeat uh, a, a big genre for big. the rooms you're playing in? Yeah, it's big. It, it started out kind of just working towards the end, but there are specific. There's my boy. There's uh, my homie Jeff. He throws these Afrobeat parties in the Bay, bro. You would think, you would think you were in fucking Nigeria because it's that popping, like super popping. He's been hip to this shit since before fucking Burner Boy and all those guys. Yeah. So now that yeah. it's more mainstream, you know. It would be like play 
10 minutes of it at 1.30 in the morning. And then it's like, okay, play 10 minutes of it at 1 a.m. And now you can kind of mix it in. Do the whole night. You could yeah. do, you could damn near Most throw it in night. your yeah, main yeah. set, yeah. And now the I'm a piano shit, that's like the new wave of it. That was my follow-up question. It, that's, I mean, the, it, it's like really chill though, for the most part, right? It, it's just chill for 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 you because you're, you're used to like such the rhythm is music. chill but it's actually fast yeah, yeah. so like but so the, the energy see so like i've never had to play it in a room that would appreciate it so when i get it it's like you know it, the energy is not there so well, yeah I, no so tyler yeah. water is has no energy no like, that's you know and that's yeah like chris so, brown sensational and like Asaka, I'm a piano. Like it don't have like the energy coming off of like fucking Drake motto or something. But if it, it you know, if the room has the, those specific people that yeah. actually respect it and fuck with it, like they'll they'll understand what's going on. But when you'll, you'll be go surprised. Into those, you'll be you'll be or, surprised on the people that are onto it. It's out. Yeah. It's always shocked me too. Like uh, when I when I'll make that left turn and go into I'm a piano or Afrobeat, it's it's the crowd you expect, but then there's a whole nother, there's like certain people that will jump out of nowhere and will know everything. They're kind of having like the reggaeton moment right now. Yeah. Where, you know, you play some Bad Bunny shit because a Latin person requested and right. then you see 30 white people singing and you're like, oh yep. shit, this is kind of, that's, that's, Afrobeat yeah, and Ama Piano is having that moment. Yep. Um, what would you say, okay, so like, this is one of the questions I was going to ask is, what are some of the biggest songs and artists to play in the Bay Area? I guess if you had to pick, I guess a handful or whatever, are there certain anthems that- Yeah. Okay. So like F Future's DJ, when he came to the concert and Lil Baby's DJ, like they hit me and be like, what, what records am I supposed to play at the concerts? So obviously you have like Too Short, Blow the Whistle and E-40, Tell Me When to Go and like Mac Dre, Feeling Myself. But there's like these specific records that if you play them, you would think that it is the biggest song that it, it's the drake record that just came out four months ago that's getting played 10 times in a night and it's insane because some of them are like fucking 10 15 years old and they still will go they'll still have the biggest reaction in the night over any other song and i i don't know if this exists in any other market because it's actually insane no, but it like, definitely uh, does not happen here. There's yeah. a there's an artist from oakland his name is little blood he has a song called third world if you play that at any moment that you feel like I'm not connecting with this fucking crowd, it, it will erupt. Uh, Mike Sherm, asshole, huge. Uh, Trunk Boys, Cupcake No Feeling. These are such specific Bay Area records that are like 20 years old, but they're not, they get a different type of energy than Blow the Whistle. Is this, uh, really quick, uh, these records, would you say, because you said like, uh, San Jose is more Vegas like would, are you playing these in San Jose too or is it just strictly no, so like okay if I play this in San Jose it would go off a little too hard so I sometimes refrain from playing it <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> oh like shit. it might be it might be a little bit like me and the owner we're like actually really close friends so he knows like if the enter the uh, so the Bay Area is all built around energy like it's a hundred BPMs and the, it's all energy. It's not really, we're just standing around. It's fucking turn. The energy is at, if the energy is at a 10, then the club is at a 10. But sometimes if the club's at a 10, you it just can get a little too rowdy. So there's some of these records I don't play because it, it might take it a little too far. Like how maybe if you, if you DJ a club where you're like, okay, I could play Dreams and Nightmares right now, but it might go a little too overboard for this crowd these Bay Area records take it there. And so that I'm, I'm very picky and choosy wow. where I play these because I know that it might get a little they're like, too- They're like fireworks. They kind of just they're explode. They're fireworks. Yeah, okay. that, but, but like different level of fireworks. These are the ones that shoot way up in the- Yeah, yeah, way yeah. up and- <laughs> This is like, and, and, this is a flame And who thrower, knows, it, like. it, 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 it could cause some shit. Uh, you know, some little <laughs> pushing and shoving might go and it could turn into a whole nother thing. I, <laughs> Sometimes we don't want those problems, so we, Some, we 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 keep away from them. See, for me, I'm just like, let it go, and yeah. I just <laughs> she wants to see the world burn, and then I just it's like burnt. back away. <laughs> All right, so you got you got three so far. I want more. I want more of these. Uh, okay, these, so like, uh, 
S O B R B E anti. Um, there's an artist from Oakland. His name is D Lo. These I'm giving you more of the historical ones that are. Yeah, like no, yeah. The, I mean, like if you're, you, you know, know if like you, we we have we have like newer artists too. We, you know, we have like we have G Easy, we have Kalani, Larry June from the Bay. He's he's going crazy right now. So, but these are just like the like the heritage records, I would say. Um, D Lo from Oakland. Um, Kamaya has a record called "Fuck It Up." Neff the Pharaoh, big time in. Oh yeah. Little B, bitch mob. Um, and then you have uh, Little Bean and Zay Zay Bang, um, Offset Jim, DB by the bag. He's from uh, Sacramento, but he's 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 pretty tapped in in the Bay. Kato has a record. He's from Oakland. Little Kayla, she's uh, a up and coming female. Well, she's not even up and coming. She's popping now. She's from San Francisco. You play five of her records, they go crazy. But Do these you- are the 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 first list that I kind of gave you is more of a you could play that. Like me, you, you, yeah, you, you can sp- play that. You can play that and they'll go crazy. <laughs> Just and I'm then not sure you have... which one you were pointing out here, but that was, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was yeah, definitely yeah. directed towards me. Okay, got it. But like, but you, <laughs> if you play Little Kayla, it might not translate because the people, the club you might be at, they might not be too hip. That's that was my question because like, if you started doing some of like the, the some of the Dirk records out here, some of the rooms, no matter what, the, you can't play those records. They just don't know yeah. it or the crowds. But it seems like. It seems like the crowds in the Bay Area are more cultured. And they know the history of like, hey, these these are our local heroes. Like, we got to support these records, yeah. so regardless of it could be the tech guy, it could be whoever. They're gonna be like, these are my records right now. Like, yeah, these are my yeah, okay. That's yeah. What like I was if you to- if 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 you go to a Golden State Warriors game, there's not a game that you go to that they don't play Mr. Fab New Oakland. Like, it's just it's it's a thing. So it's like. They're it's like gonna work yeah, in yeah. any nightclub. They're like, they're kind of like, it's like going to Chicago, and if you play Kanye, someone might look at you and be like, "Why are you playing Kanye?" It's like, Got it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it is, it is very specific. It is definitely very specific. There is, uh, there, there's layers to it. There's the heritage artists, and then there's the new artists, and they're like, they're they're very street cultured. It's like real street rap. Um, you probably can't get away with playing that in Temple or Love and Prop. Um, and then they have their own subculture of parties where they do four hours of that shit. So there's wow. there's definitely layers to it. Like I can't if 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 NBA or um, if a, if I do the athlete parties, I can't go deep Bay Area because none of none of them are from, from the Bay. There. They don't yeah. they don't know any of it. And for the most part, that South music and Midwest the Chicago shit like that's more of the national. For the most part, they know that more than I this the the local shit that even if they play for the warriors for the most part they don't they don't really resonate with that there's, there's not a connection because they didn't grow there's up no in connection. that there's, no. well they didn't grow up in the culture and it's like you know like we grew up i mean kanye used to come to our radio station and like we know his mom and everything like that so it was like a different we came up with him and like we saw that side or even dirk or chief yeah. keith and stuff like yeah, that exactly. those records were like Chief Keith, that was like it resonated with just a lot of people because it's like, yo, this kid's on house arrest and he's making these records and you got, yeah. you know, like, 100%. so there was like a connection there. Most people don't know that history and they can't speak on it. And like, we know, I mean, I don't live in that area, but I'm, I'm nowhere close to that area, but we know of it because we there, you know, of yeah, people that have lived course. over there or go over there. So you could kind of, there's some sort of connection, like you were saying that the players yeah, you, are from you, everywhere. You, you guys made the shift in music. Thank Young you. Chop made a a a, 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 a musical yeah. shift in music. Yeah, no, it really was. Yeah, Young Chop was like like drill music is essentially from Chicago. A hundred percent. Yeah, that so. is like I think that that was like uh, it, it was a culture. Sh- it was just everything. I remember when he that record just came out and they added him to Lollapalooza that exact year because I think it came out somewhere around the spring or summer and like they added him at Lollapalooza because they saw what he was doing on YouTube or what I forgot what platform but he blew up Chief Keith yeah, the, and they, the, and they uh, don't like record when they were yeah. at the ho- oh, house yeah. arrest yeah and they like it blew up everywhere and they're like Lollapalooza is like we, we gotta throw him on there yeah. but like to see that that was like a movement he created that movement and it, and it obviously other artists start taking from that and stuff like that but that is yep. A very true thing. Yeah, like we like like G Easy is from the Bay Area. He has he has big club records. You know, he's a Bay Area legend. And then you know, but our real legends are like E Forty, Too Short, Mac Dre. These they're they're, they're very they're older. They're way. Do older. they still and work they, those records, or are they kind of people are oh, like yeah, why they, are you playing they, that? Okay, no, they still work. You play Blow the Whistle, it's going crazy. 
So and that 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 that's 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 one of them records that work in any room. What about you know? uh show banger? Is that still hit? Show banger, yep, show banger. He's from Frisco. That's my boy. He got well, a couple the records. Track that was work. Uh, how we rock. How we rock. Yeah, yeah, that's, the, that that's my go-to. I just I yep. don't know if there's other yep. tracks out there. Yeah, there's I mean, bro, there's there's probably like a hundred that give or take, depending on what club you are, these hundred records, if you're a Bay Area native, not a transplant. You you know these records? Are those other are all the records hyphy, or is that just a subgenre? Uh, like- no, no, it's not. No, nah, not necessarily hyphy, but the tempos are all between I would say like ninety five and one hundred five. Yeah, we don't have Bay Area records that are fucking seventy BPMs. Okay, so like the, there's, no, the, there's nothing under ninety. The hyphy record, I, I was I was told like back in the day they were like, yo, you can't go into a hyphy set because it turns in the club just it turns into like you know yeah, we're nah, talking about like fireworks right. yeah. just exploding in your face yeah just so a, when when hyphy came out i was i was a little too young to get into the clubs but i had a fake id so i would like kind of sneak in but they it, 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 that's when you could do f- two hours of just hyphy music but the energy would be so turned that they would tell out of town djs like yo when you come here don't play hyphy shit like now no club is going to tell you don't play anything because it's not it's not it's not that not that term. aggressive yeah it doesn't it's get not that, that aggressive, aggressive yeah and we don't have like 10 years ago you had clubs that would play only rap music for four hours so like for the most part everything is a little bit more open formatting now like you're not gonna go to live and not hear maybe a bad bunny record you know what i mean so it's like it's, it's so they break it up a little bit more so it's not so aggressive the whole time it's not and, so aggressive yeah. yeah got it do um, you guys have any other questions about artists or Neil? Or um, well, hey, wait, you, you said you did, uh, I don't, I'm, maybe I, I missed it. You, you did all the hair, you did a lot of heritage uh, artists, but what are the new ones that are like bubbling? So John Mack has a record called Slow It Down. That's a good one. I think it might be going viral on TikTok. That's a good one. Uh, Young Slow B, um, he has a song called I Love You. DB Bout a Bag. Uh, don't choke and then Kato go off offset gym Chinese K they're very regional records though they probably won't work anywhere outside of like California but maybe maybe a couple of them might because well the only reason why I say that is because like in New York we get we get all sorts of visitors and like and I was telling you the story before we started streaming that um like we'll get we'll get a crew of bay area people and if i see that pocket if i see that moment where i can actually go in i don't want to play beware the boys for the (laughs) day oh yeah i I want to go in i want to go in and give them the time that they that they were asking for before i have to get out and move on i'll Um, play little blood third world that's it little blood third world that's the one just play that you'll be fine (laughs) You can skip over I've blow never the heard whistle of and all any that of these shit. artists. <laughs> yeah. If you I'm like looking at Spotify blood, right now. I'm like, all right. Little, little Blood Third it, World I, might be the most energetic. I don't even want to say aggressive. Is that like the dreams and nightmares for like the bay? Like Yes, but like on 10, because it's like 105 BPMs. Oh, the sure. the um the Pilo and Sweetie record was referenced from that record. Oh, that's oh. what you're saying that. Okay. That's what you're saying. That's what you were saying earlier. So it's yeah, yeah. honestly it's not even a real record he freestyled over the fucking soak the shocker beat but it's the it is oh, wow. if you play this shit in the bay it goes completely ape shit see this is, and this is why i asked you to go man yeah. this is why this is the stuff i want to know at least but then obviously <laughs> like you gotta have the little babies in the dirks and, yeah of and, course it, it might it might not necessarily be the songs that they might have on headliner music club and that's that's the hard part Little Dirk just kind of got popping on the mainstream a couple years ago. Yeah. He's been making music for like 10 years though. So mm-hmm. yep. out of the last 15 bodies of work, it's how do you just find, how do you know which one to play? Was That's Back in Blood part. big out there for you guys? Back in Blood was big. Okay. Blood because like, it, I, like, yeah, all the Pooh was... shit was big. Yeah. Okay. All the Pooh shit was big. Um, all right, cool. And then uh, I want to ask, okay, more towards, I guess, the bay area like you know if, if if someone was playing there for the first time what's some advice you would kind of give you know don't rent a car do okay. <laughs> don't rent a car first and foremost if you fly yeah. into oakland 
do not rent a car and do not stop at any gas stations right there because they will come and fucking take your luggage from is you. oakland worse what's is is oakland rough compared to san jose or like i don't no. know what's like oh, what's yeah, an well, area yeah. we don't go into uh i mean there's certain pockets of places so like let's in say san me Francisco, specifically do not go okay into. so if you in san francisco <laughs> historically don't go into the tenderloin this is pre pan this is pre everything that the news has been saying the tenderloin has been a no-no for us since we were young it's just that's that's where the crackheads come out at night and that's where it gets a little rough but that's also um what's this uh what's it called right where love and propaganda is too what's that uh union well, square, union square. Union square yeah, well, that, was rough right union square has been a little bit more rough than it with used crackheads to i'm not saying like you yeah know, well so yeah, the like, tenderloin is about three blocks from union square okay so now I probably walked over the there tender, too. now the tenderloin is kind of seeping over to union square oh Okay. so that that's i got chased the, there yeah i got chased but yeah. like they closed well, it down you know, for a, a parade and they like my driver let me out and they're like the hotel is over there but i got chased by like crackheads like you were saying yeah like, that, <laughs> that see that that's the crazy thing because it's like when you stay in if you think of new york you're thinking of like soho for the most mm -hmm. part most of soho is nice union square you go one block over it is it, you might be in the roughest part like you might stay at a hotel and be like, oh yeah, it's a decent price. It says it's kind of in Union Square. Yeah, you you in the wrong area. Yeah, it's one, it is one not block Union away. Square. The Fusion so I'm a survivor hotel. is what you're saying. I'm a survivor. You're, you're I mean, a survivor. You, I feel good about that. You walking around the Tenderloin at nighttime with the zombies, bro. You a survivor. Oh, All right. Man. And then obviously cool. Oakland has its pockets that are, you know, just as rough, but they have great places too. So like Oakland's pretty mixed and everything, and San Jose Oakland's is that, pretty is that, mixed. San, San Jose is no, pretty. San, San, San Jose is cool. The the, okay. the 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 police in San Jose, they're outside the nightclubs. Like they're there. They they want to make sure nothing happens. The problem is, is San Francisco and Oakland, we don't really have you know the defund the police was a real thing. We don't really have too much law enforcement, so we don't like you know. Love and was, Prop was probably one of the only clubs that there was a cop outside hanging out, but it was because it is damn near in Union Square. So they had to kind of be out there. I was always under the impression that Oakland was a lot worse than like, that was like, Oakland's rough. People are like, don't go to Oakland. But I don't know, like that was like what I was told. I mean, it just dep it, it, it just depends on why, what is your, why do you want to go? What's the purpose to go to Oakland? Like if you want to go out and experience some hella good food, go to some cool lounges. Michelin yeah, there's, star there's, restaurants there. Yeah, yeah, they got some good shit. But San Francisco historically has been the tourism part of the Bay Area. Yeah. You go to San Francisco. So that's a kind of the spot to go. Um, what would you say? Like, so okay, so you were saying don't rent a car, don't go yeah, to don't, the rough don't. areas. What are some yeah. other stuff that like you would tell somebody if they were playing out there? place to eat or if you want to go check out or if, some, if there's yeah some. there's uh valencia in the mission great food in san francisco um if you are in oakland they got the probably the best uh mexican taco trucks uh oh, shit. might be a little rough but you're gonna get some hella good food yeah sometimes um, you gotta fight your way through it sometimes sometimes it's just it, yeah. worth it lose a luggage or two <laughs> yeah yeah and if you really on some if you want some real if you're a real foodie and you out here go to yontville you know it's, yeah 40 minutes away is probably the food, one Drink of the some food wine, capitals. Yeah. Yeah, you got Napa, you got a lot of wine good shit. tasting. Nice. Um, um what's last thing I got is uh what's like one of the biggest misconceptions of the Bay Area, would you say, that people kind of you know think? <sighs> one of the biggest misconceptions is that it is fucking a dystopian armageddon world <laughs> that everyone is portraying it to be <laughs> oh shit it is, it is i lived in la they they running up on you in la in your house too yeah so it, every every big city has been hit yeah. you go to uh, you go to san francisco on a fucking saturday during the day you're gonna be like this place is beautiful obviously the tenderloin there's little pockets where we, it's been a no-no, but for and the I, most part, it's, every city's it's, got it's that. Well, I didn't, I didn't think, that. I didn't think like you keep ref, like you know referring to after the pandemic, and I was like, you know, being in Chicago, I'm like, man, it's just so different out here, and people are like, it's rough. I'm like, yeah, but we have like it. There's, it's great, and it was, we don't walk outside and get shot, and people think that when they like yeah. if that was a misconception about Chicago, yeah. they'd be like, oh, you get killed there. I go, yeah. no, not at all. We have an Apple store. Like it's fine. Yeah. Like, we're we're good. <laughs> <man."> yeah. And, <laughs> 
<laughs> that and like, makes it good. Well, I'm just saying, like, you're not going to get, you know, it's just anyway. But like, it's a, it, there's a, there's a lot of nice, like, there's it's not as violent and people make it out like people are like, oh, you're just going to get shot walking down the street. I'm like, it doesn't happen. But it seems like, you know, San Francisco, I think a lot of big cities have had that, um, I, I, I guess, that you know, negative impact from the pandemic. And I think a lot of places got, it got hit. Like the biggest thing well, that we got, you know. I think Frisco got hit one of the most because we were, we're, we're, we're the biggest space in tech. So this is the first, pre-pandemic historically, San Francisco's vacancy rate for commercial real estate has only been under like 4%. Right now it's at 30. So they're like, wow. if, if you really look at it, everything is getting closed and shut down but everyone's thinking because it's just so bad and there it is it definitely is definitely is more dangerous than it was pre-pandemic but it's also because there's not a lot of people in san francisco anymore that's the same Damn, thing. that's the same like as turning you know I mean? into so that's like our like michigan it. avenue too like we are we have so many vacancies like that used to be like the shopping district you know like every all the biggest stores are on michigan avenue and like everything's closing and people are like hey it's just because it's violence i'm like no it's because the rent prices there's a lot of things but you know and when it, and and then when you talk about the violence and all the all the crime that's going on it's because also uh los angeles conviction rate well first of all we passed the bill that you could steal anything up to a thousand dollars and no one could do shit to you so now yeah. cats are just walking into the crackheads are walking into walgreens just walking out but the conviction rate in los angeles if you if i get caught doing some dirt the, the chance that they'll actually convict me and take me to trial is like 18, 20 percent uh, in the suburbs out here, like Walnut Creek. If I do some shit out here, a 75 percent chance I might they're going to I'm going to go to I'm going to have to deal with this shit and go to jail. You know what it is in San Francisco? It's like four percent. It's like oh, the shit. lowest. That's wild. It's lower than New York. So all the other pockets outside of this hour radius that have their their troubled areas they're gonna go there to do all their dirt and then just go across the bridge and go home. So it's a lot of policy. Um, obviously the pandemic, we're still, you know, we're hit the most from it because of the work from home shit. Like San Francisco used to be, you couldn't walk around Union Square and not be popping at any given time during the day or night. Is this affecting the clubs though? Like all these things 100%. that you're saying? Okay, yeah, so it's like 100%. affecting That's why a lot of stuff. A lot of clubs closed. We went from probably I was just talking to Amen about this. We used to go out, I would say pre-pandemic, like 2015, 2010 to like 2017, you can go to like 15 places in one night. Now you might have like four or five. Wow. As far as like the big nightclubs. That's the same you know? as here too. Yeah, that's what I was trying to explain to people. I was like, it's the same. It, like what you're saying resonates so well with yeah. like what we're dealing with over here because- And like- the, LA and even New York and Miami, like they're, it's a place of entertainment. So it's like- We're popping. You guys no, are sorry. popping. You guys are always gonna be popping. Like LA, <laughs> popping. LA is Hollywood. They're never like, they might have some shit that, you know, like I've, I hear about people getting robbed on Rodeo Drive. You know, I oh, hear yeah, about happening. people getting, yep. like I, I know personally athletes that got robbed leaving fucking clubs. You know what I mean? Like getting normal people getting followed to their house. Shit is happening. Yep. It's just, they got, they, they the entertainment capital. People go there to do that, to party. It's like yeah. San Francisco, you come to eat good food and go to Napa. And then, you know, you there might and, be a nightclub that you might want to pop into, but you're not coming, you're not having groups of bachelorettes coming here, like like a San Diego or something where it's yeah, like the gas land, yeah. we're going to get yeah. fucking lit. Like, nah, like you're coming to eat good food or do some business. Dope. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you so much, man. Shabazz, course, thank you thank for you, uh, being on the podcast. And, uh, you know, you let, I mean, I think you explained a lot. And I, I just, you yeah, know, I have an understanding. <laughs> and I had so many questions. So uh, this is probably our longest episode that we've had. But, um, dude, I think uh, you dropped a lot of uh, stuff that people were probably questioning. And I got you. I'm going to make a drop box of all the Bayesian and give it to you guys. So you oh, my can gosh. It to all you. the other guys. Awesome. I was like, I was um, trying to write notes and other stuff. I was like, I I know, know, yeah. I'm, I'm over here. I'm like, <laughs> I got, I already got the drop boxes from all the other DJs I give it to. I'm just going to share with yeah, y'all. Yeah, please. Crazy. That'd be great. Um, all right, cool. Well, then uh, also, I want to uh, just really quick, we'll just go over to, um, you know, thank you guys for all the comments on Instagram and leaving uh, messages on our DMs. Big shout out to Mellow Hype, DJ Cream NYC, DJ Rocco, AO, The Professor, CRG, Blessed One. 
Um, just want to give shouts. You guys have any anybody else you want to say what's up to? Uh, DJ Kunal and Smith. Those are my dudes. And uh, oh, my buddy, my my boy Kazi Isadora. Marco Pe- Marco Palenta. Marco again. Palenta. <laughs> 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 all right and then uh five you got anybody no you guys got everything on the list okay cool and then um also if you guys you know if you leave a rating or review it leaves your like your little name there so we'll shout you out so yeah. make sure on apple um you know just say what's up and we'll shout you on the next episode but uh thank you again shabazz for taking the time and talking to us today Appreciate you guys, yeah man. and uh i think that's pretty much it man thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you again next month